Ladies and gentlemen, this is Southside Rabbi. But this is not just any old Southside Rabbi. Because today we have a wonderful people for you. Like I said, wonderful people. You know that we 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 reserve that only for people that are special. That he's not even a person. He's a people. He's a people. Okay. Who we have here? First of all, if you listen, talk about it. Listen, it's the pandemic. It's the right? pandemic. And we and we live in this is 2021. Yes. Now we the way that we consume media is different. We it have is. streaming services now. Yes. Like Netflix. That's right. Which the majority of the people watching this probably have. Yes. And see, look, there's a show on the on Netflix, on the Netflix, uh-huh. That was very popular when it came out. Yes. Called The Get Down. The Get Down. It was a show about the origin of hip hop. That's correct. Right? Which is now officially the biggest genre, music genre in the world. In the world. Right? Yes. And when I watched that show, mm-hmm. I am pretty sure yes. that whoever wrote that show read this man's unorthodox book yes. and just said, I'm going to write a show about what this Pastor Tommy said. wrote That's right. in this book. That's correct. Because when I watched it, it was verbatim what his hip hop scholarship historian brain yes. had put in that book yes. was on that show. It was on the show. So much so that when I saw it, I think I reached out to you and I said, have you watched The Get Down? And have you considered suing? And have, <laughs> and have you considered hiring a lawyer? <laughs> right? I am, ta- first of all, me and this brother sitting across from me have been impacted by this man in ways that are ineffable. Yes. You can't even describe it. Right. Yes. He has made an impact, such a huge impact on the city that we live in, the city of Tampa. Mm-hmm. And listen, if you don't know now, you know, but you, you should know. Absolutely. And if you don't, you should unsubscribe because we don't want you. We don't want you. We in don't the want fan you base. I am talking. <laughs> I am talking about nothing other than Tommy Colonin, Urban D, Pastor T, the man of the hour, yes. whatever you want to call him. He's all of it. He's all of it. We have him here on the show today. Now listen, this is Urban D himself. Yes. This is like having an urban legend on your show. That's right. If 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 if, if that could be done. Yes. That's who we have here. That's what we have. If the president of the United States walked into your building, yes. you need to pay this man that type of respect. That's what you got. Okay? That's what yes. you need to do. <laughs> We have Pastor T on the show today. Make some noise for our, our first pastor. Our first. Wow. Our first pastor, wow. the first man to, the, to, to take us under his wing, yes. disciple us. Put me in the leadership program when yes. I did not think that I was a leader. Gave him an te- opportunity to teach. Gave the, me an opportunity to teach. I was teaching discipleship members. class uh-huh. at Crossover. Yes. That was my first time actually formally teaching. Absolutely. Was wow. there. Make some noise for the man, the myth, the movement, the moment, and the, the monument. mirage, the monument, <laughs> and the momentum. Wow. Pastor Tommy. Amen. Make some noise. Man, yeah. I'm just here for the illustrious introduction. <laughs> I just dreamt about what this was going to be like, and yes. it exceeded all my expectations. Good, Amen, bro. That's what we try to do for the peoples. Okay? <laughs> for the peoples. So, Pastor Tommy, we, we uh, want to make excellent use of our time. Let me just say this as a quick aside. Crossover Community Church has been at the center of the Christian hip hop movement, and a lot of y'all had no idea. First, yes. I got, you know who I am because of Crossover Community Church. They have a festival that we'll talk about later called mm-hmm. Flavor Fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was because of that festival, Pastor Tommy uh, intentionally, Jehovah Sneaky, he was being called Jehovah, 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 Jehovah Sneaky, had me and my compadres, HGA, perform right before Lecrae. And he forced Lecrae to watch my show. Right. And a part, a part of Lecrae seeing my show convinced him to sign. But that also happened with Lecrae. Mm-hmm. Lecrae became a member of Cross Movement Records because of Flavor Fest. He showed up there with his backpack on and his demo, man, mm-hmm. yo, glad to be here. Mm-hmm. Check out this. That led to a conversation with Pastor Tone. That led to a conversation with DJ Official. It led to, led to a conversation with The Tonic that led to Lecrae being signed and then the flourishing of Reach Records. Yes. This gentleman right here has been behind the scenes of it all. But that's not what I want to talk about. We're putting that yeah. aside. I'm just letting you know, if you like Christian hip-hop, crossovers, Thank this crossover man. and Pastor Tommy at the center of a lot of what's happening in people's spiritual lives, Amen. in their spiritual development, but also in the development of the city. There's Amen. a $3 billion project that is happening around his church right now. He is on the board of that development. In fact, he got me a meeting with the guy. I had lunch with the guy that is managing the $3 billion. 
So anyways, we just want to appreciate that there's Amen. a lot to glean from what's happening. Amen. I want to start with this. We haven't let Pastor Tommy talk yet. <laughs> so good. I'm just listening, man. I'm like, who is That's this guy? People have to understand. That's right. We want you to know. The magnitude. Get the context. One of the things that we have seen with your church, with Crossover, Crossover Community Church, mm -hmm. uh, who I, I actually went to service on Sunday. It was my first in-person service that I've attended in, in a, over a year, you know, wow. a year and a half. Wow. And it was powerful. Um, the worship was strong. Um, and uh, the preaching was was amazing. You talk, you're, you're taking on this whole this, this stuff about deconstruction, um, and uh, it was just in it was life to my soul. But what I know, what a lot of people don't know, is that crossover has been around for a while. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We have watched church after church pack up shop. Mm -hmm. We've seen pastors um, essentially either get forced to confess or confess themselves, like all the kind of mess they have kept up going on behind the scenes. We have seen churches that have not been an asset to their community, but a liability, right. yeah. uh, not just simply from a relationship stand, like, like, like how you make Jesus look. We're talking about you are literally draining the pockets of the people around you mm -hmm. while you can keep up your lifestyle. Yeah. I've watched this man's integrity. I've watched him pastor a, a church of thousands of people while still driving the same uh, white the, he had the white SUV, that I remember SUV. that. Uh, that we were like, yo, let us buy you a car, bro. I, we get it. You're not trying to flex. We understand. But I'm <laughs> thinking that this is working against you now. We don't want to see our pastor driving up in that anymore, okay? <laughs> He stayed humble. His his, his wife, who's, who's as absolutely involved into the in the feather. We've just seen you do what many have not been able to. Mm -hmm. You pastor pastors, in addition to pastoring your church, talk to us about how you have lasted. Why are you here still, when most of the churches from your generation um, are not here anymore, fam? Yeah, yeah. Talk to us about lasting. Yeah, it was great to be here with you guys. And uh, you get yeah, I, I can say something. I can say something. <laughs> 20 minutes later. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this year has been uh, an amazing year in many ways for us because me and my wife, we celebrated 25 years Aye. of being married. Aye. So that's, that's a, a quarter, part of it. That's a quarter uh -huh. century. Yeah, yeah man. Yes, I'm, I'm older than you think if you're watching this on video. <laughs> look young. Yes, the Lord's keeping me good like looking. The so, um, and celebrated 25 years of being at the church. Um, so Amen. it was uh, a big year for us. And so, yeah, how did we have longevity that long? And, um, I, I, you know, a lot of people can see crossover and come to the building and be like, oh man, this is man, to come to Flavor Fest. Sure. And I always tell people, man, this takes time. Mm. It takes consistency in the urban multi-ethnic context. Like this doesn't, you can't just set up shop and blow up. Boom. People right. come to Crossover or Flavor Fest and be like, I'm going to set up a church like this and next year it's going to, like, man, this has taken years and years and years. There's a, there's a story behind the glory, right? The old yeah. saying. Yeah. And so, but but the longevity piece is, I mean, I mean first and foremost, um, with my marriage, uh, my wife being my best friend, mm. dating her still, yeah. mm -hmm. honoring her, like the creative person that I am, like trying to, Infuse creativity into our relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and um, and, and she's been, you know, I'll be honest, man, the first 10 years of marriage, uh, we had ups and downs, mm -hmm. but as we continue to keep doing that hard work, going yeah. to conferences, reading books, um, did some counseling. Mm -hmm. I've known the urban community a lot of times counseling is like, oh, that's a dirty word. Like, right, right. oh, I'm not going to counseling. That means I'm crazy. I don't need a therapist. <laughs> like, listen, we all need to go talk to somebody yes. sometimes. Yes, absolutely. It, it can be a great thing. And so, um, by about year 10, man, we really got into a rhythm and what we were finding, like what our strengths were and weaknesses were and how we were able to complement each other. And so having a, a strong wife behind me, my partner, my, my best friend has been something that has really, and then having great accountability mm -hmm. that sustained, sustained me. I have mentors, I have people that'll ask me hard questions. And then even my team, some of my team at Crossover, the staff, like it's not yes people. Mm -hmm. like, like we're a team, we do things together. And if, if I say something or do something, like they have full permission to pull me aside and be like, hey, What's going on with that? Yeah, Why did right, you do yes. this? Why did you, right, right, right. you know, that might've been taken like this. And, and so we, we have, we're very open with each other. And so there's, there's just, a, we've created a healthy environment. Um, and we've also like, I always say this, I've learned some of my greatest lessons from other people's mistakes. Mm. I've seen so many mm. other pastors fall. Uh, so many other pastors not have the right systems in place and structures. 
because you can start drinking your own Kool-Aid. Right, sure. right. When you start to grow and you're getting big and there's momentum and, yeah. you, and, like, and you're moving a million miles an hour and yeah. then you're not spending time with God anymore. And you're just, mm. you know, I've watched so many people kind of go down that road. And so I've always been trying to be very careful with those things. And even like you made the joke about the car thing for me, I think even for me, that helped keep me humble. Mm. Right, right. You know, that's good. Be, because- That mug was devotional. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's powerful. Be, because, you know, I travel a lot and I mm -hmm. go speak at, at different conferences and churches. I still do a little bit of music. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you go place, man, people, they want you to sign your book and, you know, they want a picture with you that, you know, and you can start thinking you're something. But for me, like when I'm at home at church, mm -hmm. like it's just past the tea. Right, right. right like right. nobody wants my autograph. And it's funny because people come to church that are visitors visiting from somewhere else. And sometimes they'll want a picture. They'll want me to sign something. And some of my own people will laugh. They'll be like, man, that's so funny, man. They're yeah, like, yeah, you right. like you're a... I'm like, that. well, some people look at me like that, but man, I'm just past the tea. Right, right, I'm right. in the lobby after every service yep. and I make it a rule mm -hmm. for my staff you're not allowed to be having a meeting in your office after church. You got to be in the lobby. You got to be with the people. You got to smell like sheep. Yes, you got to right. be around them, be touchable, be available. And so even like at Flavor Fest this past week, when all the artists are in the back, I give them that pep talk. And I'm like, we're inviting you to be on our leadership team this weekend. So I don't want y'all hanging out back here the whole time. Yeah, I want right. you to go out with the people. I yeah. want you to support each other, be in the crowd. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm inviting you to be part of our leadership team. And some of the greatest ministry you might do this weekend will not be behind the mic but it'll be out there in that Say lobby that. right right so Woo! yeah and that's a fact because that's one thing about flavor fest it's always been that yeah it's always been that you'll be walking around bumping into artists yeah, yeah, yeah. right uh -huh. like yeah. I, I, and that's one thing that i've never noticed about any other conference that i've been at that people are literally mingling with one another artists are not posted up in the back of the yes. green room just stand back there with you know eating green skittles right <laughs> like you are you're you're bumping into folks you're having conversations with folks like you said ministry is being done yeah. right. and we always yeah. saw again even us that's our testimony seeing pastor t yes was like seeing anyone else in the church sure, it wasn't sure. a, yeah that's powerful and, and and us coming from a background before yeah, we you came from the opposite. Where we came from the opposite, oh, yeah. where the pastor was you thrown off in a helicopter. Hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, could, yeah, you couldn't even shake his hand after service. Let's just keep it funky. We were at Paula White's church. We were. We left Paula White's church yeah. to go to Crossover. Yes. yes. And uh, and, and we, I praise God for Gary, G86. G86. He was a yeah. remnant. Shout out to him. He, he was a jewel in the mud he was, because though. it was yes. muddy over there, bro. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. It was, I remember one time we... This was probably the final straw. So we weren't <laughs> preach, we weren't sitting under pastor. So the, the church was separated basically. It, really, two it was like two churches. It was the sanctuary, the, the adult church, and then it was like where, like where the youth, the youth ministry. Were. Right. We were with the youth. Right. And uh we're in a totally and the youth separate pastor building. was 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 worse than than, than yeah. what was happening over there. Youth pastor tried to fight tried me to one fight time. KB. We'll put wow. that aside. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to <laughs> fight me for leaving church. I was early. I was I was there. That happened. Yes, you were there. Yes. He Garrett told was there too. He, he told to KB, I will me. break you. He, he said, said, I will break He said, you. I will break you. That's the quote. Like, where is this coming from? <laughs> wow. We're just going to the studio to rap songs about Jesus. And we went to church this morning. Spiritual this was intimidation. The third That's what it was. It was spiritual <laughs> intimidation. And, and this is I'll bring that up. You know, in fact, Gospel I'll, I'll just use this for an example. What he said to me when he went off on us. I remember, I remember him walking out the sanctuary, pulling his pants up, like, yeah. like, like tightening like his belt, ready. like he was ready to go yeah, to war. Where are you guys going? Where you going? Where, where you guys going? It was like a I, said, oh. I said, oh man, we just uh, we heading to the um, studio. The studio. He said, while Bishop is preaching? That's what he said. The like, we audacity of you. We He's, went to two services this it's morning. It's six o'clock in the evening. Yes. We went to church this morning. Yes, bro. We, we're Christian. <laughs> we're 17 and 18 year old boys uh -huh. with no real responsibilities. <laughs> We've been here all day. Right, right. So we're like, now we're going to go somewhere else. They do more Jesus stuff. Right. He was like, oh, you know what this bishop has sacrificed for you to be here? <laughs> so anyways, to, to leave that and come to, to, to that. It was, a yeah, it was, was good. very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, I remember, man, you guys definitely had some deep wounds. Oh, you yeah, had some, some like some authority, like manipulation yeah. that was, yeah, happening was happening in your past and mm -hmm. some questions and stuff that you guys had for me and just even your mindset. I remember like, your mindset about even Christian hip hop and everything. Yes. Like mm -hmm. you thought you were going to die before, by the time you were 21, I'm, sure I'm not I'm even going to live. I only got a little bit of time left. Pastor I got to make use of these days, man. I, I was, <laughs> I remember I one can't time believe that I forgot about that. In that I world, I just think of some of the crazy things that came from the pulpit. Like, and we, let's not harp on this because we got to get back into, mm -hmm. but I remember one pastor said, 
in that movement, he said, some of you are trying to save yourself out of poverty, meaning uh-huh. have a savings account, you know, live a little bit less and live, live off less and mm-hmm. save your money. Yeah. Some of y'all are trying to save your way out of poverty. That's not how you get out of poverty. You give your way out of poverty. <laughs> wow. He said, I, 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 I A lot of you people not. there gave themselves into poverty. Into deeper that's poverty. Exactly, that's, that's how what, it that's, works, fam. Yes. That's exactly how it let's works. Take up three offerings. So, anyway, service. let's stop. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. The analogy the pastor gave, he said, Some of y'all have nothing. So, you need to go get find some cans in the trash can, sell those cans, and come bring the money here. He said that? He said that. God is my witness, bro. Oh, wow. no, you yes, did. Yes, he did. And, and it sounded weird, but I said that the pastor said it, and he's the authority. So, we got straightened out a yes. lot when we came to right, cross on right, us. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, there was a bunch of y'all, man. It was, it, it was, wow. What do you do, though, with, we went through phases. So we went through, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the over-authority phase where we were like, you know, Pat, you know, Bishop, I remember one time there was this, uh, there was some random dudes, you know, you're not even gonna remember this. There was some random dude sitting in the parking lot um, in uh, his car. He had been sitting there for a long time. It was at the old campus. And and you were about to go check on, up on him and say, hey, let's see what's going on. And I said, and I stopped you. I said, no, 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 no. You're the man of God. The man of God can't put himself in a position where he could get injured. I'll go. And I stopped you from going. Wow, I don't remember that, yes. bro. That's I stopped crazy. you from going. Wow, but that you, was, he was looking out for your pastor. You know, the, but wow. The, the, it was, which was fine because I should have, <laughs> yeah, in yeah, hindsight, yeah. I should have been like, you're the shepherd. I'm the sheep. Go protect us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it, was, it, wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't even <laughs> yeah, a real yeah, yeah. threat. But I think that that was straightened out. The other thing that was straightened out is that you also got us mm-hmm. when we went hyper-reformed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we became that. The cage, we were cage, cage stage Cal- Calvinists. Cage stage yeah. Calvinists. You, you we went we from were, one end of the pendulum yeah, to the other. Went man, to the other one. Started, we started fighting you. Started yeah. fighting. Now, we weren't as bad as some people that were in the yeah. church that, yeah, yeah. that we were like, they should be kicked out. <laughs> um, but... What do you do with multi, doing multi-ethnic ministry? You got people yeah. coming to, you, you didn't grow up in a charismatic church, I'm assuming. Did you grow up in a charismatic uh, church? It was, it was somewhat, but, but uh, with a seatbelt on. Okay. okay. Yeah. So but you got a lot, urban, urban ministry is yeah. to have a lot of people coming in with charismatic. There, a lot is, of, there is. There's a diversity in tradition right. yes. at your church. How do you, yeah. you were patient with us and I give you. Amen. I give you yes. I, I I we didn't handle it well. You did, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and I think that we are better off because of that to this day. But how do you deal with that? Well, I think one of the big things is you have, like we talked about the pendulum, right? It's right. swinging from one end to the other end, and you guys went from one end then mm-hmm. totally to the opposite end, right? And you know, people many times get attracted to that far right or far left sure. of everything. Mm-hmm. We talked about mm-hmm. that a little bit before the cameras are rolling, the algorithm, it keeps feeding you right. the stuff that you're already looking at. It creates that confirmation bias. So then suddenly, you know, you know, you're listening to all the stuff that is hyper reformed. Sure. You're, mm-hmm. you know, everybody seems to be on that tip and everybody's running with it. Right. right. And so for me, as a pastor that's leading a church that's super diverse, mm-hmm. um, I'm always trying to pull people to a healthy biblical middle, mm, right. a middle ground. Um, because yeah, and even on the ends, they're, they're not, not that everything's bad, there's right, some good right, things, sure, sure. but hey, let's, let's pull you over here and, and not, you know, sometimes people, you know, they major on the minors. Sure, right, I'm right, right. trying to get you to, to major on the majors, yes, the right, gospel right. and some yeah. of these secondary issues, they're not such a big deal, but people get stuck on those secondary sure. issues. Mm-hmm. Sure. And generally what I find when somebody gets so stuck on a secondary issue and they're unbalanced, there's unbalance in a lot of areas Ooh. of their life. That's true. And there's a lot of immaturity. So there was some brothers that um, we did have to ask to leave the church. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they were like, man, y'all don't even know how to run this church. And they were just coming at at me and Pastor Tone at the time. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks after we asked them to leave, um, we've only had to do that a few times. Uh, It's biblical um, if it gets to that point, right? right? A few weeks later, one of the dudes found out that he was sleeping with some other girl. Yep. And it's like, mm-hmm. wait a minute, I thought you were this big, holy, right. you know, hyper-Calvinist that had was everything right, but now, like, your whole life is a mess. Sure, right. sure. And, and your wife kicked you out, and yep. you don't even have a place to stay. Yeah. And you lost your job now, and it's like, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. Right. So it can and be a I sign. The, the, yeah. the story of it is that the ugliness that you are bringing in your argumentation is a reflection of the ugliness in your actual soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, yeah, and we, so we and we loved on those guys, yeah. and mm-hmm. they eventually came back. Yeah, yeah and as a yeah. matter of fact, one of those guys, as a matter of fact, about a month ago, came and rapped with his son, and he's in leadership at I another church. It. He's I balanced now. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, he started coming to the church when he was seventeen, 
and he came and did a song with his 17 year old son. Wow. And he showed me this picture where I dedicated his son at the old campus when he was born. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, I'm getting old. (laughs) So, wow. But yeah, it's powerful though, man. One of the things that you, um, that crossover, it does just maybe better. uh, Not that this is a competition, but uh, it it just better than, than, than most churches that, that you would know is the way that y'all love your city. Mm-hmm. Um, crossover is known around Tampa. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes people will call it the hip hop church, which, <laughs> yeah. which we don't particularly like. No, we're <laughs> not the hip hop church. <laughs> we are church. a church. When you go to yeah. the church, you find out real quick that this is not a hip hop church. This is not a hip hop church. This is a church. Right. right. But people who can't reflect on it well, typically in our city, when I, when I, you know, just kind of going around and people start to reference churches in the city. They, they, they mentioned Grace Family, which I was at last night, actually. They had a boxing match for their men's group. I'm, st- I'm still not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> so the men's group were boxing? So, the people so, in the men's group were boxing? How amazing would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Leaders walk into the ring, fighting right, each other? Right. No. They oh. had uh, basically a, my, my homie Mason... Um, because uh, I was supposed to walk him out to the ring, but they start on time at there. So I came at like 7.10 and I missed it. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, uh, it's Grace, bro. They're not starting on CP like time. a Grace fan. It came on artist time. Right, right. <laughs> Still came on, on that. artist time. Artist time compounded with CP right, time. Right, right. So um, anyways, they had a box. They had a... They had a match. So they had a bunch of fighters, you know, amateur Mason fighters. Fought? Mason fought, yeah. Huh. Um, and, uh, and then the pastor came and preached. It's a men's fellowship. And he preached after that. I guess he preached in the ring. I left. I had to go put the kids down. Hmm. But anyways, they talk about Grace Family. And then they talk about Crossover. Those are the two mm-hmm. churches that if you're just a random Tampa person and you're referencing Telling you. churches that you have impact, that you are familiar with, yep. that, that I, I hear those the most, at least in my own experience. Yep. That's partly because of what you all do for the city. Talk to us a little bit about that. Even talk about Flavor Fest and the ways that y'all engage loving your neighbor as a fundamental part of what it means to be a member at Crossover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've always been big on outreach, you know, even since you guys were around. But when we relocated to the new facility uh, on Fowler Avenue, we're in a very needy neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we intentionally moved there. A lot of people thought we were crazy because right in the middle of the recession, mm-hmm. and that area used to be referred to as Suitcase City. Suitcase City, City yep. Very transient. I mean, poverty, homelessness, mm-hmm. drug crime, all, all kinds of stuff. So people were like, you're crazy to go there and, in, and invest over a million dollars into this old like retail box. Like uh. everybody's leaving that area. There was, Fowler Avenue had a bunch of empty storefronts oh, yeah. in yes. 2010. I remember. Yes. Empty restaurants, empty uh-huh. storefronts. It was not- Like abandoned. It was not a place to go Put over a million dollars. It was not a good business move. Not at right, all. Right. But we knew it was a God move, and yeah. He was telling us that's where we need to go to help rebuild that community. So that that, that was our heart, man. We want to go there and rebuild it and be in the heart of the city mm-hmm. in the urban community. And so we went there, and man, we got in, bro, by the skin of our teeth. You remember? Yeah. Remember. yeah. Like uh-huh. we we had construction debt on I our shoulders, right, right, and like yeah. the old campus, we didn't have any mortgage. We didn't have any rent. The building was ours, clear yeah. and free. So now we had to pay rent. We had to grow up and pay rent. And then we had this big facility to take care of. We were joking about uh, the uh, electric prices, you yes. know, early. Like <laughs> our first month, bro. So the old campus, our biggest electric bill in the summer might've been like 500, 600 bucks. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. The first month in the new facility was over three grand. Oh! And I was like, turn everything off right Lord, now. Lord, right? the fence around. So, right. so there was definitely Lord, like, our energy. We, we, had to, we had to learn a lot of things over those first couple of years. Um, but immediately we were able to do, to use that facility to do incredible outreach and everybody would just come. So we did back to school events, giving out backpacks right in the parking lot, food drives, concerts, like block parties and right in the parking lot, trunk or treat, all kinds of stuff. So as that grew, eventually, you know, we, we would have, you know, two, 300 people come out and serve mm-hmm. at those events and impact thousands. Yeah. But my heart as a pastor, I'm like, man, that's still only a small percentage of our church that are really serving. Mm. And so I began to look at that and say, why is that? I was getting frustrated with my people. Sure. We'd show the highlight video. And I'm like, y'all are missing out on this. Yeah, yeah, you can be getting we're, in on we're, this. We're gonna have, we should have 500,000 people serving. Like, what's wrong with y'all? You know, this is amazing. And so the reality was most of the time it was on a Saturday. Yep. It was for a few hours. Well, a lot of people work Saturdays. Yeah. 
A lot of people uh, have kids' activities on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are traveling on the weekends. A lot of people, that's their only day off, and they're just yes. not going to go. So when you do, you take all those percentages out, I'm like, that's why we only have 20 or 30%. We don't have enough options. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do this thing called. Oh, yeah, hold on, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. bro. So what you're suggesting, hold, real, hold on, hold on, just real quick. Think about it. Something that you don't really think about. Think yes, about it. I didn't think it's about it. It's not until necessarily that, that, that the people are just like, I don't care about this darn church. I right. come here on Sundays. Yep. I don't want to sacrifice. It's I don't want to. The yeah. church hasn't innovated enough ways for them to plug in. Exactly. Woo! That's a pound cake that's right a, there. So a, we yeah. decided to do a whole week of serving. And here's the other caveat, too, is like, we want to give you options of where you are passionate so you can pick what you want to serve in. Right. Mm. The right time, the right kind of project. And so how do we pick the project? So I had this crazy idea. I came to my staff. I'm like, guys, we're going to do a week of serving. We're going to uh, pray that we're going to have 500 people serve. We're going to do 50 projects. And so my staff was like, we've never had 500 people do anything. <laughs> right. You know, like that's a lot. <coughs> like in 50 projects, what would we do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. we said, all right. I said, all right. We, we got a whiteboard. I said, well, who lives within a three to five mile radius of this church huh. demographically? Mm -hmm. Because here's the problem with the church, y'all, is many times when we think outreach, we just give away free stuff to poor people. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Most mm. churches are not doing enough of that, right? Sure, right, for sure. But we got to go beyond that too. Yeah. What about middle class people? Mm -hmm. They need Jesus too. They sure, need the, sure. the love of Christ. What about affluent people? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're going to help fund some of the stuff you're going to give away to the people that, that need stuff, right? Sure, sure. Um, what about people that may not have you know, a lot of money, but they don't have kids that need a backpack? Sure, sure. Because mm -hmm. they don't have kids anymore. They don't need presents at Christmas. So a lot of the things we do, it's... it's uh, not including sure. the whole city. Wow. It's not inclusive. So we said, man, yeah. we want to love all of our city. So let's make a list of the demographics that live in a three to five mile radius. And so we started going, well, USF's up the street, University of South Florida, right. go, go Bulls. So we said, we got <laughs> college students. Uh, we got business people. We got young families. We got people in poverty. We got homeless people. Mm -hmm. We have seniors. We have immigrants. We have, you know, our, our neighborhood mm -hmm. around the church is super diverse. So then we said, okay, so now let's connect projects to each one of these people groups so we can serve them. We can show them the love of Christ with no strings attached, mm -hmm. right? And so we started to create all these different kinds of projects and they really go in three categories. One is sweat equity. So we uh -huh. might cut people's grass, paint their house, clean a school, all kinds of just a lot of that's free. Yeah, sweat right, equity, right. A lot of times the materials are donated. Uh, the second kind, which reaches all kinds of demographics, is pay it forward projects. Uh, so we would go down to the laundromat on 15th yes. Street. Oh, yes. And we would go with $500 of quarters. And with laundry, laundry detergent, fabric softener, we show up. Nobody knows we're coming except the owner. Right. And by the way, he's very happy we're coming. <laughs> I bet. So, like, so we would show up. you say? And, and so, uh, <laughs> you know, there's like 10 people in the laundromat. And so we show up and, you know, we all have the Love Our City t-shirts on and start telling them, hey, we want to bless you today and pay for your, your laundry. For real? For why? What, what's this about? What do I have yeah. to do? <laughs> Nothing. It's Love Our City Week. We just want to serve you. And we're trying to make the community a better place. And so, you know, boom, they're like, once they get it, they're like, oh, hold on. Hey, girl, you need to come down to the laundromat? Because yeah, 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 no, love our city. You, you need to bring it. You need to bring it today. You need to bring the comforters. You need to bring everything, right? So, like, shopping carts pushing down the block, right. filled with stuff, cars pulling up, trunks opening up. Like, within 30 to 45 minutes, the laundromat is packed. What? And it's popping. That's so And ew. everybody's waiting there right. for their laundry. So organic ministry begins to happen. Mm. People are having conversations with people like, hey, why are y'all doing this? Uh, and a lot of times the question is, are y'all from a church? Because we didn't even tell them. Right. As a matter of fact, we are. We're from Crossover right down the block. Right oh, down the block. I heard of that church. You know, and then like, so amazing, like organic ministry happens. People pray with people. Now, here's the other thing. Talk about reaching all demographics. About 300 feet away from that urban laundromat is the new Starbucks that they built oh, a few right. years ago. That's right, yeah. Because the neighborhood's starting to gentrify a yeah, little right. bit. Right. And so that's a whole nother demographic that we're buying everybody's coffee. They don't need us to buy their coffee, but right. a lady gets out of her car, comes up, we give her the gift card, and she just breaks out in tears. Wow. And she's like, she's like, I was in my car right now having a panic attack. I was praying. I'm like, I feel like I haven't felt God. I'm asking him to give me a sign. And I walk out and here you guys are. Wow. And so they're ministering to this lady. They're ministering to people in the laundromat. Right. And I mean, it's just reaching all kinds of demographics. We, one, one of my favorite projects is Knock Knock Groceries. So we do about two to 3,000 homes and we just knock on the door. We're there with groceries. Like, hey, we got groceries for you. I didn't order groceries. Like, no, nah, no, nah, these are free. It's Love Our City Week. Oh, for real? Like, you know, yeah. like, oh, and door, all the 
apartment doors start opening up. Hey, you got something for me? Right. You know? <laughs> um, so that, and then we do appreciation lunches. That's the third category. Um, and we do that for every teacher, every firefighter, every police officer, every clinic worker that's in that radius. So we usually do about 800 to 1,000 free lunches that week that we, uh, they're catered with our, our restaurant partners that are in the neighborhood. Uh, and we get them for cheap prices or they might right. even donate it. We have partners. And so everybody we touch that week, the only thing we do is we invite them to the party. Yeah. We're having a big Love Our City party. Yeah. And guess what a party is? It's church, church on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, church and on so, Sunday. Yeah. And so uh, every time we've done that, like that, we've done that about f uh, four times now. Um, we'll have hundreds of first-time visitors. Um, we preach the gospel that Sunday. There's, there's a usually over a hundred people that respond, that we get their information uh, so we can follow up on them. We give them a, a book, Next Steps on Your Spiritual Journey. And so that way they give us their card. We follow up with them. Then the following week we do water baptism uh -huh. and we baptize hundreds of people over that. the past few years, hundreds of salvations, hundreds of uh, baptisms. And then we plug those people into discipleship and get right. them plugged. And there's a bunch of people that are part of our church community because we first met them through Love Our City. Mm, that's powerful, wow. man. Yeah, man. It's so it's- powerful. And it's grown. So the first year we didn't have 500. Right, right. Uh, we had 600 show up. I'm Woo! like, look at my people. Wow. And so we had to add projects. We did like 70 right. projects instead of 50. And then it grew over the next few years to right before the pandemic, uh, we did 152 projects with over 1,500 volunteers. That's powerful. Man. And here's wow. the thing, church leaders that are listening to this, by that time, the majority of the money, the budget was about 30 Gs. The majority of it we raised from outside corporate sponsors and donors. Really? Wow. Yes. I mean, we had to put the sweat, sweat equity in. Right, right. But we gained this reputation, the community that all these corporations and businesses wanted to be part of it. Right. And so even the way that we got 1,500 people to serve, a couple hundred people weren't even from our church. Really? They were companies that wanted to uh, give a, a $5,000 donation. And we say, hey, do, do you want to bring your team in to come and do a project as a team building project? And we'd put a couple of our people on that team to lead it. So it's not just all people right. that aren't from our church and they're out there serving with us. And they're like, man, this is the coolest thing ever. And they're like, you want to come to the party? I, I want to come to this party Sunday. Yes, I'll be there. And so we had people that served with us that had never been to our church. And then they came to our church and plugged oh, in as well. Man. So it was outreach Inside and Inside, outside. Right, right. Yes. In reach, yeah. outreach. In re right, right. Yes. Wow. So it's been amazing. And we've helped uh, a whole bunch of different churches. We've given them the template and the model. And so it's it's becoming a movement that's been birthed right here from, from our city. I love it, man. And that's where these packages come in, the leadership kits. Yes. So because when we first started doing it, a lot of people follow myself and the church on social media. Mm -hmm. And they started hitting us up like, oh, man, you got to teach us how to do Love Our City. Some conferences started to bring me in to do workshops on it. And soon I just realized, man, man, we need to like, we need to document this. Mm -hmm. We need to create like a real resource kit that can really help other churches and answer all their questions. So if they're not going to be able to come to the workshop or I'm not have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, like this can like scale right. and we can help lots and lots of churches. So we created this box kit and inside of it, uh, I wrote a 30 day uh, devotional book, which um, I know, I know a guy that gave an endorsement for that. I know a guy, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. Yeah, he's I'll on the back cover. I got you covered. Yeah, so I had KB as an endorsement. It was all Tampa people, so I had KB on there. I had our city councilman on there. Nice. And I had the guy who runs the innovation district, just to kind of show like these are people from our city yes. that uh, endorsed it, this and have been part of it. So a 30 day devotional book, that's a key part of it. And then every seven days, um, they can watch a video. It's like a workbook as well. Mm. It's on Right Now Media. It's on YouTube, and it's a it's it's a whole series about you know how to learn to love your neighbors, you love yourself, walking yes. through the words of Jesus. Because we don't want people to just do these projects and like they get excited and they feel good and then they go back to life. Right. Yeah, 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 like yeah. we want to get the theology deep down inside of their sure, soul. They're sure. studying this for a month. They're right. watching the videos. Right. We also have a sermon series with the transcripts and outlines that pastors can take and make their own, put their own illustrations in. So they're getting inundated with this theology for a month. And then that leads up to the last week of that month is the serving project. Right. I love it. Amen. So then like, hopefully it's not just this one off one hit wonder, but uh -huh. it becomes a lifestyle. Right, right, That's right. our goal that then like we have lots of people in the church now that have even started their own nonprofits and started all kinds of things that were birthed out of love our city because they got a taste of serving right. their neighbor and loving them. And so, so we created this box kit. It's got the book in there. It's got a leader's guide. It's got a thumb drive with about 15 gigs of stuff on it, all the artwork, the project templates, fundraising guides, yeah. all that stuff. Um, lots of goodies in there. 
And so we sold uh, over 200 of these. It's clean, um, too. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but um, we got to the point during the pandemic where my heart is really just to help leaders. And so we said, man, we're going to give this away for free now. Amen. So the kit is actually free. Mm-hmm. Um, the only strings attached are if you buy 10 books. So you gotcha. get 10 books and then the kit is free. The reason we did that is because we want we want people to try it. Like right. do, do this 30 days with your small group or do it with your staff and check it out. And then there's a lot of churches that have done that and said, man, we want to do this church wide mm-hmm. and get everybody to do it. But I understand you got to try stuff first, first right. and look into it. So, so yeah, uh, loveourcitybook.com has all the details on how you can Love get a kit. Loveourcitybook.com yeah, for boy, free. Hello. For free. Um, and we'll have a link to that uh, here as well. The other thing too, uh, when I, I went to uh, service on Sunday, and um, a bunch of things jumped out of me that I loved. Um, and um, one thing that was overwhelming, almost emotional for me, was how diverse the community was. Mm-hmm. So I saw, I saw white folks in there, black folks, yeah. brown folks, Indian, Asian. Um, I know I'm, miss, I'm mixing ethnicities and race, <laughs> but you get what I'm trying to say. It was very, very diverse. And... I, it just so happened to be a Sunday that you mentioned what I mean. And I have talked about several times. Most people inside the evangelical space, if you have, if you've been paying attention to what's happening in evangelical space, you realize that with uh, it, it, going back to the death of Trayvon Martin, um, the, the murder of, of Trayvon Martin, up into the yeah. you know where there was like, okay, now this conversation, this conversation on race relations and all that jazz is. In the forefront again, um, we we noted on this show how there was some sensitivity to it when it first happened. People were like, "Oh man, that's really sad," and let's talk about it. And here's a good opportunity for us to talk about some racial reconciliation. And then the conversation became more and more hostile. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, Donald Trump was elected, um, and there was all kinds of implications that created more division within our churches. It was getting bad. You know, we we have a friend of ours who. Uh, did a sermon on racial reconciliation uh, out of Ephesians. He barely mentioned anything about black and whiteness. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that he said that, you know, it was like a sub point in his sermon. Man was fired almost immediately. Yep. Wow. Um, Church made him sign an NDA. Uh, wow. Yes. I, we, there's a good friend of ours who's at a seminary whose name I shall not uh, say. Um, and this is actually really sensitive for me because I'm kind of bothered with this guy uh, who was an ally of ours white dude but he was talking wild about right like the, the need to tear down white supremacy to the point where we were like brother mm-hmm. you're taking us a little too far man you're making me feel <laughs> and um his job started to get on the line people started talking crazy man did he, i wouldn't say he recanted but he was definitely close to it yeah. and uh this is the story for many people that they either are about to lose their job or they have mm-hmm. lost their job or they lost half their church or, um, I mean, this is all mm-hmm. over the nation. When you start talking about race stuff and you do it in a way that is empowering to the, the minorities in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Right. George Floyd is murdered on camera. We watched that. Mm-hmm. Again, the inflammation that was already there became more inflamed the church, the division was was statistically, the data supports this, seen almost most profoundly in the church, right? Mm-hmm. You on Sunday mentioned some of that reality and how Crossover saw almost none of that. Mm-hmm. Now, you you are a diverse community. Yeah. There was white folks in there. I saw them in the front row. Not that white, only white folks struggle with this. White folks, we know by, by statistics, are less likely, especially evangelical white folks, are less likely to see the seriousness of, of race in our country. Yeah. Note that that is mainly evangelical white folks. That does not speak to all white folks. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, most white folks don't really feel that way. That mo- Most white folks would be like, yeah, race is a problem here. Mm-hmm. A lot of evangelical, not all, but many of them that have that struggle. Anyways, yeah. but that's present in your community. It's present in our community as well. Yeah. Talk to me about why. You're able to say what you said on Sunday in reference to George Floyd, our need to, to, to deal with these issues, admit that they are real and be a part of solving them. And it has not caused half your church to say, I knew he was a Marxist liberal crit- critical race theorist. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about yeah. the conditioning, a yeah. sort of discipleship of your church that at least makes it able to be talked about. 
Yeah, that's good, man. Good question. Yeah, I mentioned that on Sunday that a lot of churches, even friends of mine, even some guys that I coach, when they bring that stuff up, like they just get all kinds of pushback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And thank God, praise God, I haven't gotten any pushback over the years. I mean, on, on our on our Facebook page, because we have thousands of people that, that watch us online, sometimes right. there'll be some people on there that'll stay, say stuff, but people that are in the in-person community or even if they're online and they're members, I haven't had to have any real tough conversations with anybody, with, with any white people that would fit in that category that are, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, um, questions from some of those people. Right. But always in, always good questions. Sure, sure, sure. And, uh, and, and reframing some things for them. So, but I think, you know, the, the reality is because we've been talking about it all along. And a lot of the white people that are in my church, um, because they are the minority in my church, because we're predominantly minorities, Hispanic right. and African American. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we probably have about thirty percent white. Yeah. So they're 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 already coming in that environment, feeling comfortable that hey, I'm mm. I'm I'm a minority here, but you know they have a voice, and there's white people that are involved in everything, right. just like there is black and brown and yeah, everything yeah, else. Sure. And our staff is is very diverse as well. So it's it's you know we're we're not that church that's. Um, diverse, and then the staff is like <laughs> right. all white or something, right. you know, because we see a lot of that. Um, like we're truly multi-ethnic on every level: yeah, staff, yes. elders, um, ministry leaders, down to the congregation, down to right. people that serve mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. So, you brought up Trayvon Martin. Um, we preached about that the right when it was happening. Yeah, and crazy story. So we do a lot of our message planning, like we plan out the year for our series, and we try to create a. a, a balanced biblical diet for everybody, some expository, some topical, and, you know, on things that people are struggling with in our community Mm -hmm. and our faith community and in the community. Mm -hmm. And so we look at that. And of course, the Holy Spirit can change that. You know, we have up on the map and sometimes we take series out and add other stuff. But we had this series that was planned, I think it was, if if I remember, it's 2013. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was called Lies the Culture Told Us. Mm -hmm. It was like an apologetics type series. So the first week was like, I was born this way. You know, that's a lie that the culture told you. And we broke that down. Um, All roads lead to God. That, you know, that's a lie. You know, fatherhood is dead. That was on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. We're like in the urban community, a lot of people can feel that way. No, there's some good godly fathers that are breaking cycles and breaking chains. So then it came to this week where we wanted to do a message about authority Mm. because our our culture struggles with authority. Absolutely. And rightfully so. A lot of leaders have let us down and we don't trust Uh and all that stuff. Um, but we wanted to preach like, but you have to respect some authority or you don't respect the ultimate authority. Sure, so sure. that's where we were going with it. Yeah. So we came up with a title for that message that day, and it was the most controversial message title that we've ever had. And, and you know, we, we try to be uh, engaging with sure, our sure, artwork yeah. and our title, but but not we, we not don't to like, we don't do it as a gimmick. We right, don't do it right. just to try to Trigger get people, people to be like, ooh, it's yeah, genuine, right, genuine right. innovation. Yeah, is it is. Oh out. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. good man. So so we um I, I took it before the staff. I took it for the elders. This title and everybody and I explained why we wanted to do it. Everybody was okay with it. I'm like, all right, here we go, right. So that week, you know, got the sermon ready, you know, um, got the slides ready. Everything's printed, all in the bulletins, all the stuff is, we're ready to go. That Saturday night, the night before at 10 p.m., the verdict came out with Trayvon Martin. And social media lit up. It was on fire. And people in my church were putting all kinds of, people were hurt, people were upset, people were angry. Then they walk into church the next morning and they get their bulletin and they see the graphic on the screen and Lies of Culture told us Mm -hmm. series and the title of the message is F the Police. Because that has been a a slogan, Woo! a mantra in the urban right. community. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't Absolutely. like authority. Let's be real. F the police, you yeah. know? Right. And so at that moment, that's how so many people in the urban community were feeling, feeling right. because of this verdict that yes. just happened. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and they're like, oh man, like it's the powers that be. And, you know, they were like, did you stay up all night and make this sermon up? Did you do this? Like, cause we preached on injustice and we preached from Amos. We preached from Nehemiah chapter five. Um, Then we looked in the new Testament of like how we're supposed to pray for our leaders at the same time. And like, we, we we balanced it together. Sure. Uh, We took out a moment. We prayed for Trayvon Martin's family. We prayed for Sanford. We even prayed for Zimmerman's family because God knows they needed it. Right. right? And so we, we just had this moment where everybody held hands and we prayed and people just, there was tears. People walked out of there like, wow. It's powerful. I am so glad my church is talking about this kind of stuff and is brave enough. So, you know, we did a woke church series on Dr. Eric Mason's book. Um, 
you know, what we've done so many things over the years. We've done panels. We had police officers and city officials and activists yeah. uh, on a Sunday. Right. The news came and everything. So we that's been in our DNA yeah. Yeah. to regularly have these hard conversations. So last summer, you know, when everything happened, you guys came to the prayer walk. We did. Yes. Uh-huh. You know, the city's calling us because right. it was our neighborhood. Fowler Avenue was the epicenter for the looting and the violence sure. of yes. the, the protest that went bad yeah. uh, in Tampa. And uh, over 40 businesses on our street were looted and some were burned down. Yeah. Some of these people were our partners. Yep. This right. restaurant, right. this restaurant that the day before in our grocery drive through we were ordering food from them to keep them in business. Uh, we have this fund in our district. It was called the We Nourish Fund. And we raised up all this money to buy food from uh, wow. independent restaurants in our neighborhood to keep them, um, you know, employed and open and all that stuff, not from closing. And then we would give out, they're like, well, we got this food. We want to give it to people that need food. And, and we have this grocery drive through with hundreds of people coming through our parking lot. We're like, they're going to get groceries and a hot meal. Mm. Right. So one of those partners, Saigon Bay, yep. they were yep. next to Champs. Mm-hmm. The, that, the day before, they were, we got 300 meals from them the day after they're burned down. Yep. You we're know. doing the prayer walk and the building is burned. I used to live in that neighborhood. That's, yeah. that's where I, before I got married, that's where, yeah. where, where we live. So lived. the city called yeah. us and said, yeah. well, you know, the, the business leaders, all this stuff, we had emergency Zoom meetings, everything, everything was on Zoom back then, especially. So they're like, what, what, what do we think we should do? What are you doing? We're like, well, we're going to do a prayer walk. And they're like, can we come? Wow. And then the yeah. light went off like, oh my gosh, like we could lead this citywide prayer walk. And that was Tuesday. Yeah. It happened Saturday. That was Tuesday, and it was going to be the next Saturday. So we had three days to put this together. I mean, every, the police called us, like, how can we help? Yeah, yep. they called us, yeah. so they blocked down the street. They and, were there, I you know. That. I mean, in, even in the middle of pouring rain, like we would have a lot more people come if the weather would, would have cooperated. But I mean, the true people came out. No, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, and it was amazing. Hundreds was of people came time. out. Yeah, it was thick out there. And it I mean, was. it was uh, diversity. I mean, police walked with police, us. Yep. Activists, pastors, business leaders, uh, city councilmen. Tony Dungy was there, you know was what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Him. Nice. Um, so celebrities were there, like people that are, you know, uh, influences in our city were there. You guys were there and uh, it, was, it was powerful. And so, yeah, God's given us that mantle because we've been loving our city right. and we bring people together and we're known to be this diverse church. Man, I, I wonder, I wonder, Pastor, if, if, I, if I can contrast what y'all have done and what we see happening in churches all over America it feels like the justice conversation is like a hard turn at 90 miles per hour. Meaning mm-hmm. the church has never been dealing with this right. or anything adjacent to it. Right. Yeah, you're right. So so, so now it's like, which hey, is, we're justice people now. Which is why it feels like it's... You talk about a whole different yeah. church. Yeah. It's like you're, you're, you're traveling 90 miles per hour and then you're trying to throw the car in reverse. Sure, you throw it in reverse. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's a hard turn. Mm-hmm. And I also think it's a hard turn for, for the theologians and the champions, uh, the, the kind of influencers of the, 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 the kind of, especially reform evangelical movement. Right. It's, it's a hard turn for the James Whites and the, and the, remember when James White was, was beginning to address some of this stuff and, it, and really it, it, it became real public for him when he was criticizing a black boy he saw yeah, throwing uh, littering in a bush. Yeah, and, and flicking off and, and, and flicking off yeah. the uh, police officers. And he just began to write all these assumptions. He probably doesn't have a daddy. Yeah. He's gonna have a he's, child. He's out gonna of have a child out of wedlock. Right. You know, he's he's gonna be you know probably be in prison that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. he's making all these assumptions about this little boy, wow. not realizing how profoundly dehumanizing and offensive it was. Even though he's trying to say, well, there's data out there. There's there's there's, there's data that says that I I might be right. Yeah, but you might be wrong too, bro. Right. You should right. probably lean in on that. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. love hopes that you're wrong. Did, exactly. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Anyways. <laughs> right. But one of the things that the 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 the, the what I felt like I, I could see through for, for, for in when he came out, out in this and people other brothers and sisters mm-hmm. were trying to trying to gently correct him or or even harshly correct him. He needed both. And he he started to dig his feet into this. Yeah. Like he, he doubled his down, feet, tripled doubled down, down, refused to have conversations mm-hmm. with people about it. He just would get in front of a camera and talk two hours about why he's right. Yep. But what I saw in that was I saw a man that has never, ever thought deeply about these, these things. He, his time has been, you know, yeah. textual apologetics. criticism, yep. textual apologetics criticism. with the death, burial, resurrection yep. of Christ. So now you're being asked to use a portion of your theology that does not exist. And I thought that that was probably symptomatic of what's happened with churches all over. And if the pastors are like that, their people are like that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've never thought about this for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know the KKK is wrong. 
Yeah. But but for a lot of individuals in that space, it, it's it's a hard turn. And what it sounds like you've said, and I think that's part of why the Trayvon Martin thing was not a hard turn for us at yeah. all, uh, because we had been talking about these things preceding that. And yeah. this has been a part of our just experience of being black in America. But, but I, what I was going to say yeah. is I think that also what crossover does is what a lot of churches sometimes don't do. A lot of, a lot of churches haven't thought deeply about it because they haven't had to. Yeah, and, and, and that's, have, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If you don't have yeah. members that Message. are... Are f- that that are in that are facing, that are experiencing police yeah. brutality, that are experiencing what it's like to live in poverty, that are experiencing injustice, then like you nobody don't have to came to it. your church Sunday morning in tears because of the verdict. Right. You know yeah. Nobody's coming yeah. Yeah. right. Nobody if feels no one, like nobody feels like Trayvon Martin could have been their child. No yeah. one feels or, yeah. or someone Trayvon Martin's age that might be in a church doesn't feel like it could have been them. Right, 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 right. Right. So if you don't have that, then you're not going to talk yeah. about it. It's not a reality. Yeah, they feel for like you. it's not touching them. So, it's not uh, touching them. Yeah. This yeah. isn't relevant to this crowd here so much. Right. It's a hot potato. We'll right. just, yeah. Yep. So, it's not so much of a hard turn for Crossover, who, since its inception, has always dealt with the issues of the urban community because right. the yeah. urban community is the church. Yes, yes. That's yes, another yes. thing. It's not a, it's not a evangelical church just placed in the urban community sure. that's yeah. still doing just. Just if I could say this kind of suburban white evangelical ministry within uh, urban America, right? This yeah. the church is made up of the people of the the of the, the, the the community, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Yes, Pastor Tommy. Um, as we we kind of bring this thing to uh, a close, um, I did want you just to have kind of the final piece of this to talk about anything that mm-hmm. uh, burdens for your heart, things that you're excited about um, whatever whatever you think might be helpful for our people as in and connecting it to what it is that you are passionate about a burden for this particular season I, I just want you to have the floor for a second to, to kind of share that with with, with our people uh, cool thank you man well first of all man I want to say I'm proud of you guys because <laughs> we go way back and just to see what God's done in your lives man it's been it's been amazing, man. Amen. You're doing Thanks so God. much great stuff and using your platform to talk about hard issues that a lot of other people aren't willing to talk about. Mm, mm. And God's giving you this platform. You guys are stewing it well, man. Thank and so you, Thank you, man. I'm, I'm smiling. I'm listening. I'm a, I'm a fan. I love it. I'm a fan. But for me, like, so I, I'm, my passion and my heart is for leaders. And so everybody that's listening, I know you got leaders on here that are listening too, but I, I know you might have... A few pastors, a lot of people aren't pastors. I say pray for your pastors. Mm -hmm. Pray for your leaders at your church because it has been an incredibly difficult season to lead. So many nuances to navigate uh, from the pandemic to are we going to reopen safely? What does that look like? Should we wear masks? What, what are, are you going to talk? Are you going to push vaccines? Are you going to do this? Are you, you know, and then the racial injustice stuff and then the politics stuff. That's, there's been so much that's happened that you know, churches that do have some diversity, even in just thought, mm-hmm. right? It, it's been challenging because so many pastors have uh, have felt that pressure and have quit, yeah. yeah. you know, or yeah. they've left, yeah. you know, or they've fallen into sin. Yeah. And it's been challenging because most churches have reopened by now. And, you know, many of the pastors are looking out and seeing only 40, 50 percent of the crowd there. Yeesh. And it's Man. just, you know, it's disheartening. Where is everybody? Are they coming back? How is there? I don't see everyone. What's what's going on? And so pray for your pastors. So for me, our, our church during this season, yeah, there's definitely been some some tough things to navigate. It's been heavy at times. Um, I'm a people person. Mm-hmm. So when we were closed for you know, over six months, man, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just need to see some people <laughs> and hang out. I mean, we did a weekly grocery drive through in our parking lot and about 20, 30 volunteers from our church would come to that. For me, that was church every week. Right. Like man, in person. Man, brother. You know, and we were very creative, innovative with all the stuff we did online and we grew during that time. Um, but it was still, it was challenging. It's tough. Even for me as a leader in, in many different ways. And then just coming back and even finding on our staff the way that, uh, everyone views everything that's going on. There's, oh, there's different thoughts, even right. on our team, which before we were always like pretty much on the same page with everything. Right, it yeah. was the first season where there was actually like some different thought, you know, groups even on our team and the way. So we had to like kind of, I had the eyes of the leader kind of have to like balance all that, that out tight. and that navigate tight, yeah. that and keep, try to keep my team happy and listen to, you know, I don't want to make sure I have any blind spots because yeah, yeah. I've never led through a pandemic before. Right, right. 
so bottom line is, you know, even through all that, man, our church has thrived. Thank God. It's been the grace of God, the favor of God. We've thrived in so many ways. And so, you know, I find myself regularly talking to other pastors through email and phone and, you know, Zoom calls and, you know, all kinds of different things, just trying to, trying to help encourage other pastors yeah. and share with them, you know, some of the wins and some of the things that we're doing that's working. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in kind of the corporate world, um, we hide the secret formula, you know what I'm saying? But in, in kingdom, like when it comes to ministry and church stuff, like, like man, like I, I want to show you what we've done, right. love our city with whatever I want, give you the blueprint, you take some of it, what works for you and make it better. Yes. And I want to celebrate with you. I want to learn from you how you took it and I want to hear what you're doing. And so um, I, th I think those leaders that are thriving right now, or at least, you know, staying steady, there's a lot of collaboration happening. I love it. There's a lot of conversations happening with other leaders out right, there. And so, right. uh, so yeah, that's one of my big passions right now to, to, to help keep other leaders in the game. I love it. Um, that's why we did Flavor Fest. Right. Because, you know, a lot of people, y'all still doing it? Like, you know, I heard it's bad in Florida. <laughs> and, and it was a couple of months ago. But, yeah. we, but we were projecting and praying that the, the Delta spike was going to drop in Florida, which, praise God, in the month of September, it, yeah. it dropped big time. So by the time October came and we did Flavor Fest, um, you know, things were much better here. And, man, we, we had hundreds and hundreds of leaders come. We had the, the same attendance that we normally have. Right. But right. we had online, too, so there was actually more. And the concerts were actually bigger this time than they were the last time we did it. Wow. So like people, yeah, yeah, yeah. people exactly. are, yeah, people in Florida at least, they, they yeah, ready yeah, to, for sure. they're ready to come out. And so, but it, it was, that, that weekend was amazing. Uh, it was great to be able to pour into leaders and, and um, encourage them and just have fun. Yes. Right, right. You know, it was like a big family reunion. It was. It was. Family. Even it was like so on another, it always is, but on another level, like, oh my gosh. Especially after, right. Been so long, we've been in an environment like this. And so, so yeah, my, my heart is just to help pastors during this season and just share some of the wins, the innovative things that we've done with follow-up, with um, discipleship, with finances, with um, a lot of new systems and, and stuff that we've put in place that we've tweaked um, that's really, really helped us take ground and really helped us minister to people more effectively even in this time. So I love it. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, Thank you so much, Pastor Tommy, yes. for what you have and shared with us, what you have led us into. We are grateful for this moment and also just grateful to have you in our lives for all these years. Yeah. And um, I'm glad we're still connected, man. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Honored to be partners in the kingdom with you, Pastor. Um, this has been Southside Rabbi brought to you by our good friends, CSB. Uh, if you don't know about CSB, it is a contemporary version of the scripture that is so incredibly readable. In fact, it is the version that we use at our church. It's yes. kind of the official version that we recommend to mm -hmm. folks. Much love to the other versions as well, but we are very much grateful for our partnership with CSB. Check them out. God bless you. And we also want to give a shout out to Samaritan Ministries, a Christian approach to health care that has served a lot of people in our community and we want to recommend them to you as well you can go to their website samaritanministries.org slash southside rabbi for more information there this has been southside rabbi i am kb a me in the dream we'll see y'all next time